Hi YouTube, um, I'm just going to show you this video um, that I made of some of my lesser hedgehog Tenrex. Um, these are called Echinops telferi. Um, they're a brilliant little species and they come from Madagascar. Um, they look very like hedgehogs um, because obviously they've got the spines and everything, um, but they're not uh, not related to hedgehogs at all. They're a completely separate kind of thing. And they um there's several different species. There's a, a greater hedgehog tenrec as well. Um but these lesser hedgehog tenrecs they're very small, um about the size I suppose of a um of a hamster, you know, say a Syrian hamster, something like that, maybe a little larger, but not much. Whereas a greater hedgehog tenrec is um, a bit closer to the size of our native hedgehog um, but I've kept uh, African pygmy hedgehogs as well uh, and for a while I reared up some of our native um, native English hedgehogs as well um, and one thing I would say that I've noticed is that hedgehogs are quite smelly when you keep them um, they eat a lot of food they make a lot of mess um, and yeah, I found them to be pretty smelly. Whereas these guys, um, they they don't seem to make much of a smell at all, uh, and they're they're a lot sort of slower metabolism, so they don't do as much in the way of like poos and that kind of thing. Um, so what you're seeing here is them having a sand bath. Um, so in their cage, it's a good idea to give them a bowl with a lot of um, fine sand in it. And you can see what they do is they go in and they take little uh, paws full and they rub it in between their spines and they seem to love doing this. Um, so I, I always try and provide a dish um, so they can do that. Um, and yeah, I, ju I just think they're a really great little species. So they eat um, mealworms and um, giant mealworms as well which I dust with um, Nutribol. So you just get the mealworms, uh, put them in a like a beaker or a cup or something and just add the Nutribol powder and give it a good shake and then tip those into the cage. Um, so you can either put a bowl in for them, you know, to go and get the mealworms out of the bowl uh, or you can just release the mealworms into their cage and then they can have a good route around trying to find them. Uh, and that can be quite handy, like if you're going away for a few days, you know, put a load of mealworms in and it'll take them time to, to find them all. Uh, I tried to give them a sort of naturalistic setup, um, so you can use like, uh, add leaf litter in there with them and that sort of thing, branches for them to climb on. Um, and a sort of a nest box, I give them a nest box. Uh, and I try and keep, you know, you can keep multiple females together um, with one male. So what you're seeing now, um, this is a, an adult female that had a litter of four babies. Uh, you can see all the uh, four babies sort of rooting around trying to find some mealworms in there. Um, this is obviously when they're grown on a little bit. When they're first born, they're sort of, um, you know, pink and... Uh, spineless and very kind of uh, weak looking <laughs> and you've got to be really careful because when the mother is really pregnant you really have to leave her alone you've got to keep everything really quiet and leave her in her nest box and just um, apart from feeding her what I would do is I, I would open the cage and I would hand feed her with um, tweezers lots of giant mealworms and um, just to get her to eat as much as possible and that means that she doesn't end up eating her babies because they can, if they get spooked, they can end up eating all their babies, which is horrible. So sometimes you hear little noises coming from the nest box and you think, I want to have a look and see how many babies I've got. But you're best, honestly, you're best just not doing that. If you can hear noises from the babies, the last thing you want to do is open the nest box and have a look because, you know, you can count your babies but then they could be eaten the next day by the mother who got spooked so you're much better off just being patient keep feeding the mother as much as she can eat because then it keeps her full and it keeps her mind off of eating any babies 
uh, and then you just got to wait for the little ones to emerge out of the nest which is great and then at that point you can see how many you've got and yeah in this case uh, I had four and they're lovely and if you start holding them you know straight away then uh, they get tame very quickly uh, and they make great pets like really really good pets I can thoroughly recommend this species uh, as a like one of the most interesting kind of small easy to keep mammals that you can I mean they, they do have to be heated a little bit um, at certain times of the year uh, other times of the year they can be kept just at room temperature they they do go through like a period of torpor but that can be quite useful because they, they do the period of torpor and then when they wake from that and start feeding again um, that's the time that you introduce the male um, to the female uh, and you'll see like breeding will happen like or mating will happen straight away and then uh, you can wait for a bit and then separate out the female again uh, give her a nest box and uh, just make sure she's not spooked by the by having a male in with her keep her separate and then fingers crossed you'll get some babies okay if you like this video check out my other videos uh, hit subscribe to see anything that I post up in the future uh, and I hope this has helped because keeping these is great fun thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video